Yes, hi again. Uh, I'm Emil, a Swedish hacker. Um, in a previous video, we checked um, uh, to see uh, how to use the um, remote code execution uh, of uh, the Bricks uh, Builder. And uh, now they have released the patch. Uh, so uh, today we are looking into the patch, we're examining the patch. Uh, we are looking into uh, what was the proposed patch uh, by Snicko. Uh, the guys uh, that found uh, that found this uh, vulnerability uh, it was a, um, a guy called Calvin uh, still don't know if I pronounce it right but he has not yet complained um, but uh, we are looking into the patch uh, can we hack it uh, in what way can we can we hack it and how was the patch implemented uh, so uh, let's start to not make this a two hour uh, video. Uh, let's jump uh, right in to uh, what we can expect. Uh, so it's a complicated, it is complicated to give a quick fix uh, since the functionality uh, to evil, uh, this is user input is backed into several parts of the builder backend. And this is true in their opinion evil evil is a function in php that basic basically runs other php uh, it should never be used since ultimately it always leads to something bad it is insecure by design to use it and this is important uh, so let's take a note i have already done that i'm just going to show you show you my notes so at first they say never use evil okay we're going to take a look if if um, this is what happened in the patch uh, of course the quick win uh, the quick win uh, is adding the correct permission check to the rest api endpoint uh, so what will be the downsides of the quick win uh, that still leaves dangerous functionality around it might be very well possible to call via other means and this is what, uh, to, to jump a little bit ahead here, this is what we are going to utilize in at least two different ways uh, in probably uh, the next video. Uh, I will show you two reliable methods of uh, calling this uh, uh, via other means then. Uh, so, uh, let's take a note. The note is permission check uh, in the REST API, the quick win. Is this implemented and how? Uh, it should not be possible for anybody who's not an admin and preferably not even admins to ever pass ever pass anything to evil the function is it only possible for admins to send anything to evil is it possible for anyone to send anything to evil we're going to take a look at the bare minimum, the two instances in the code base, and this is before the patch, where Bricks uses evil, the query class and the code block class, should be completely guarded against unauthorized non-admin access, and the input must be heavily validated. Is this implemented in the patch? Uh, heavily validated input sent to evil. We're going to check. Uh, we've also identified many places where uh, data from the database flows into evil. Okay, so uh, we can get, uh, we can set data in the database and it will go through to evil in the non-patched version, which is also not ideal since it means that anybody that can update this table in the database, possible via low impact vulnerability uh, a remote code execution uh, i would say is high impact vulnerability but we can still have remote code execution with a low impact vulnerability if bricks is operating the way it was before the patch uh, we will be able to inject system commands into the database which will then be passed to evil i will uh, jump a little bit ahead here and i will tell you uh, how to do this as as well uh, and everything I will tell you is in, uh, it will meet the conditions of uh, 
uh, fresh uh, fresh VPS, fresh uh, WordPress core, fresh Bricks patched version, and also with the new uh, created uh, uh, certificates. And we will attack sites pretty reliable within uh, 30 seconds, maybe faster, maybe a little bit slower in some setups, but that is what this is going to end up. Uh, this is a drawing of uh, the WordPress. Uh, we'll get back to it later. Let's see where we were. Uh, yes, uh, to inject systems. Did we take a note? Does data from database flows into evil? We will check that. And then there is this proposed solution. Uh, one solution for this could be storing a signature along with the code that's uh, to be evaluated uh, by a hashing function. That way at runtime it can be assured that nobody has been able to inject code into the database. So this is a proposed solution uh, so that we can no longer inject malicious code into the database that will be run by Bricks. We will take a look if this is the case, if it's implemented in the patch. And um, when, uh, when we have done this, we will uh, take a look at what uh, can we expect from the patch. Do we want them to implement everything uh, at once or do we want them to uh, maybe just implement uh, some of these to get the patch out as quick as possible? Uh, well, uh, let's take the first. Never use evil. It's an easy, easy check. Let's do it like this. Let's search evil. It's here in the query. Let's see if it was there before. Uh, query class, yes, still exist. Code, it's here. Yes, uh, both of these still exist in the patched uh, version of uh, Bricks. Uh, so let's uh, give this uh, red background so we can remember that this was not uh, this was not implemented. Uh, maybe it's not also the best solution to, to just remove it because we need it. If you want a page builder that can execute a PHP code, uh, in example, um, uh, with the code element, this is really hard to uh, get rid of if you want a reliable way to execute PHP from your uh, from your builder. Uh, the quick uh, the quick win. Uh, how was this implemented? Is it implemented? Uh, also, a quick uh, look here uh, where the problem was uh, uh, before. I think it was in this. Did I take a note? Uh, I will take one step up. I think it's called something like this. Yes. Uh, so this is the render element permission check. Uh, let's take this. Can we uh, open the API in the timeline yes uh, so this is where we were uh, last time uh, here and uh, uh, this uh, were basically what let us in the last time and I will try to explain uh, how this uh, worked and how it changed uh, and if it's a good change uh, or not um, but uh, basically uh, in the last video, I showed you how uh, we can take uh, this nonce, make it evaluate to something uh, that is true, either a one or a two. We can bypass this check and we can have this uh, permission check to return true. And we can do that because this is uh, a default uh, allow policy, uh, which I don't really like in permission checks. It should be the other way around. I will maybe tell you why uh, later. But if we bring up the WordPress uh, sketch uh, here, this is basically how a request hits WordPress. It goes from uh, the, uh, the browser uh, through the internet 
Uh, it hits the third party firewall that is uh, external if you have one. Then it hits the server uh, and very early on the server uh, rules uh, something in H uh, HT access or Nginx configuration or something like that will be evaluated. And then any prepended PHP code will run. So if you have a firewall that prepends code, it will run actually before. Uh, oops, it will run actually before uh, WP Core or WordPress Core. This is the index.php file runs here, um, and this is where WordPress is uh, loading configuration settings, etc. Uh, this settings file actually includes uh, another load file that includes the database and this settings file is also including uh, user configuration so uh, in here in wp core before plugins uh, are loaded are handling uh, credentials and uh, connections to database uh, etc so that plugins later on in the chain of execution can use uh, those credentials by asking wordpress uh, both uh, uh, what the, both for users and both for database uh, and uh, uh, in the in the last uh, uh, in the last uh, vulnerability uh, bricks did not uh, ask wordpress for user credentials uh, they just said that let's uh, handle this ourselves uh, the nonce uh, the nonce is valid let's accept the request uh, and what is changed in the patch is that they actually now have a capability check uh, so we will take a look at this if it is a good one or bad one but they actually have one that means if i were to send a request now i send it from my laptop to internet i send uh, send it it will hit first it will hit the third party firewall will go through here and all the rules uh, they have will be evaluated then it will hit your uh, server configuration it will hit your prepended firewall if you have one and it will hit uh, WordPress core uh, from there uh, I will actually change my color here uh, because our attack uh, will be evaluated uh, uh, as a good request um, so uh, when uh, this request hits uh, bricks here uh, bricks will actually run the function current user has no access and with it will be uh, checked uh, it will po uh, is populate the right word here uh, but it will go through a chain of evaluation and it will end up asking wordpress is this uh, a valid request wordpress will answer yes uh, it's a valid request and if the request is valid uh, by wordpress uh, it means we now have remote code execution uh, so this is uh, one way uh, we need to take if we want bricks to uh, execute code for us here uh, I will show you another way to do this uh, later, uh, but this is this is basically how it's supposed to work. Uh, uh, this is green because we are respecting uh, WordPress uh, authentication uh, uh, authentication flow. Uh, we are wh when we are exploiting this uh, in the next video, we will just be breaking laws of your country probably uh, we will not break any rules of wordpress so bricks will uh, st uh, still think that this is a valid uh, valid request and execute the code for us uh, this is uh, what is mentioned here uh, might very well be possible to call it via other means it is dangerous dangerous functionality uh, where were we? Uh, yes, this is implemented. Is it only possible for admins uh, to send uh, uh, something to this uh, evil function? Uh, let's take a look. So 
current user has no access let's check what that is it is found in the capabilities static class can i check it like this yes uh, current user can use builder uh, current user has full access current user has no access this is the one uh, the hacker uh, needs this to return false and how do we uh, return this to false let's take a look again uh, was it in the ix file no in the API yes so uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, default a default allow policy uh, so what the attacker really needs to do is just figuring out a way uh, for this to uh, evaluate to uh, uh, to true uh, to false uh, because if it is true uh, we are looking for the errors we are not looking for what to, what to accept and uh, uh, I believe it should be a, the other way around let's make a quick example here not to make it uh, too long video um, uh, duh, duh, duh. let's make it restaurant permission check so we've had a previous problem uh, with uh, uh, animals in the restaurant, uh, so sh uh, check check for animals. Allow humans, humans. Uh, if we write it uh, default allow, and if is animal return false uh, we deny we deny the request so this is basically the strategy of uh, always uh, default allow uh, and the only thing the attacker needs to do now is to bypass this is animal function so uh, if if uh, there uh, is someone that can reach this function and uh, they can uh, get it to like yeah I, i'm actually not an animal i just need to find why one way that i'm not an animal maybe i'm an insect doesn't count as animal okay that will actually is animal then return false this will not be executed and everything else uh, will be uh, allowed uh, also if the problem was is dog there are a lot of dogs in the restaurants uh, uh, we need to deny dogs and we allow only humans but then there comes a cat and says like yeah i'm a cat am i allowed and this strategy of permission check will say okay we have no rules for cats better allow it and it was never the intended uh, way so uh, better to do it the other way around if you really just want to allow humans in the restaurant better to check for is human return true and deny deny everything else so this is, um, uh, according, at least according to my opinion, a better strategy when doing permission checks. Uh, that uh, we uh, always deny if we don't know. We should never really have to check for if the user has no access. Because according to my opinion, no access is the default. But that's not the case here. Uh, so, uh, can this be exploited in the current version of the patch? Uh, maybe not, but let's take a look at it. Uh, go to definition. Did I, I did put the wrong thing. Has no access. Okay. So, 
uh, this is the has no access function uh, and if it's uh, not set capabilities uh, they will run this uh, function to set the capabilities and uh, then they will use uh, this uh, return statement and this is another problem i believe for the future because it's a little bit unclear what it does uh, it says no full access nor edit content and i believe that's actually correct uh, english and the developer of Bricks is a very skilled developer, so he can probably read this uh, perfectly clear. Uh, but <coughs> I can also read it if I take a closer look, but it's not obvious. Uh, I, I don't think it is obvious to any developer. So when Bricks grows, I know from researching that this uh, permission check is used on two places in the uh, in the code uh, right now but it might be it might be used on different places in the future and if the developers really can't read uh, this and still looking for has no access uh, it might be uh, a problem for the future uh, privilege escalation or something like this uh, because uh, I'd really like to know uh, if you're a developer and you know how to read this uh, please uh, let me know in the comments because I really want to know what you guys uh, think of this. Uh, this is uh, a boolean value. It is turned the other way around from what it was. This is also a boolean value. It is turned the other way around from what it was. And they are returned together as a together uh, statement i don't know if it's the right uh, word to say together statement probably not but i think you understand what i mean and uh, that is it is a little bit hard to uh, evaluate what is coming out from this from this function uh, and um, yeah as i said please let me know if you can read this uh, and do you know if i set full access equals true Oops. Equals true. Uh, edit content equals true. Ah. True is because I'm not writing the right code here. So uh, if this were the case, we have full access, we have edit content. Uh, what is this returning then? Uh, of course, it uh, returns uh, false uh, because uh, current user has no access should be false when we have full access. Uh, if we swap both like this, uh, then uh, we have no access and this returns true and we can now um, uh, use it like like it was intended uh, because uh, the current user actually has no access uh, but if we change just one of them if we change just this one will this now return the, this is the last one it's the last one to be uh, evaluated of both of these uh, the last one is returning true can you now see what is the return of this function? This, I want to know this, uh, so please tell me in the comments. Uh, because this uh, will actually return false. Uh, false uh, and true uh, will return false. Also true and false uh, will also return uh, false. Uh, but this is no problem because if we have full access, uh, it is probably safe to say that current user has no access should be false. But the problem with the other way around is when we use this function, current user has no access in a way that there is no... Um, the problem for the future here is that these are multiple step access. It's multiple levels of access but it's in, it is used, where were we, here. It is used in a way that can only return true or false. So this, uh, this uh, will be false if we have edit content capabilities. This will return true 
and the render element permission check is really not enough uh, to execute code. Uh, this check is not enough because it has only zero access or full access. There is no step. Uh, there is no step in between. So Bricks has to do another check. Uh, if we then have uh, permission, we now have permission to render the element. We need to check permission again if we have. Uh, code execution and administration privileges and this can lead to problems uh, in the future i believe at least uh, but i respect that other developers might have other opinions um, but that's at least my opinion uh, let's take a look is it only possible for admins to send to evil yes uh, it is probably uh, let's see if it's in here. This is uh, where we render the code element. Uh, so in the render uh, element function, we do this uh, sanitize element uh, PHP code. Uh, and let's check if it's only possible for admins uh, to send things to the uh, evil um, evil function. Um, uh, sanitize element helpers here. Sanitize element helpers. So uh, this is the other check I was talking about. This is uh, how I want to see it. We check for what to give access. We, we give access if we have full access and if we have execute code. Uh, in that case, that was my dog, very angry at someone. Uh, if we have this access, uh, we return uh, the unsanitized version of what was sent here. This is the sanitized element PHP code. We do not sanitize anything uh, if we have full access. Uh, but uh, the question was, uh, is it possible for non-admins, uh, uh, only for admins to send to evil? If we continue, we are no longer uh, full, uh, full access. Uh, so uh, the code element is uh, turned to an empty string. And then we can really, we don't have to read, uh, read this until we get here. The code element will actually be set from code that was fetched from element uh, element data that was uh, fetched from database uh, yeah it says here uh, setting a value from database um, but this is the function that gets from from database so we are also uh, just returning the code without sanitation in the sanitize uh, element php code uh, if we have zero access, we just get it from another uh, location. So let's put this also uh, at the red marker here. Default allow policy, easy to read. Yes, we have talked about this. Sanitize element, full and execute. Yes. Uh, is it heavily validated input? Uh, we have just uh, shown you uh, it is actually not uh, validated. Uh, for admins, it's not validated. For non-admins, it is also not uh, validated um, in the sanitize element PHP code. There is another way of sanitizing the code that was, I believe it was not documented before, but it is documented uh, now. So we're going to take a look, but here there are no actual actual <coughs> sanitation. The, the thing that they do is basically if you're an admin, allow, uh, allow what you sent. If you're not an admin, get it from database uh, without further checks. Uh, uh, so let's not call it heavily uh, validated at least uh, because uh, we can check this and it's present in the code uh, elements code uh, filter. Let's see. 
check here. Uh, where is it? This is the evil function, it should be above them. Disable keywords. Uh, here's a filter uh, to actually prevent dangerous calls. It says it has been uh, present since Bricks 137. Uh, it was not changed in the patch, I believe. Uh, let's check it just so I don't lie to you. No, it was, uh, it was not changed. Uh, but uh, the default, uh, where are we? Here, uh, the default is to not prevent any dangerous calls. So if you didn't put this filter in your code, there is actually uh, no uh, prevention against dangerous code here uh, in the patch. Uh, we can send uh, from uh, admins and we can send from database. Okay, what I've showed here is a way to send it from the admin. This uh, request, when it comes here, WordPress will say, this is uh, an administrator or uh, this user has access. Uh, where were we? Yes. Uh, when we attack bricks uh, from this direction through the firewalls, we will end up here if we can evaluate this to true. And I will show you how this is done. I will not. Yeah, I might have to uh, put this on my other screen, not to reveal too many dangerous codes here. Can I do this? Yes. I can do it like this. I can make sure you're not seeing what I'm doing. Whoops. Where did I type my password? Doesn't matter. Uh, yes, it was lucky I didn't show this. Remove the patch, yes. Let's do here. Uh, let's take a look at the file where I can steal cookies. Uh, these are the cookies I stole from my test site that is a vulnerable, vulnerable patched version, uh, .bluetimer.io. Uh, so when I'm sending these cookies, malicious cookies let's move this away again when I send these malicious cookies this will be true this this uh, will also be true and uh, and this um, uh, will be returned uh, also I'm going to show you uh, how to attack bricks uh, the other way around uh, we are going to attack it this way uh, we are going to send a request uh, from our uh, computer through the internet. We are not going to hit any firewall. We are not going to have it validated by WordPress core. It is not going to pass bricks. It is just going to put evil database, uh, evil, uh, evil code in the database. Uh, and uh, what evil code will we put in the database? Well, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, we will put uh, SQL injection test. This is uh, bad code. Uh, we need all this uh, bad code uh, in the database. But what is really bad is the part from here to here that is not sanitized or checked in any way. And uh, together with the rest of this, uh, this will be evaluated uh, uh, by Bricks uh, and it will uh, run. So the request uh, looks like this. The attacker, uh, let me get my green pen again. The attacker first put uh, this um, in the database. I will show you how to do that also on a fresh VPS, fresh WP core, fresh bricks patched version, etc. Uh, but that's uh, in the next video. I will just explain how it works. I will now send a legit request. I will send it through the internet, through the firewall, uh, through uh, the server rules, through the firewall prepended, 
and it will hit WP core. And uh, this is a re request to, for example, just the start page, the index page. So it, it's a legit request uh, uh, that will uh, be let through the firewall. Uh, WordPress uh, will tell Bricks that, hey, uh, you need to render an index page. Bricks uh, will then tell WordPress, okay, to render the index page, I need to take a look at the database. WordPress says, okay, uh, you can look at the database. I'll fetch the information for you. So WordPress will now, uh, with a legit request to the database, fetch our malicious code that is then sent back to WordPress, back to Bricks, and Bricks uh, will just trust this, uh, which means we also, with this attack, have remote code execution. Oops. Uh, it, it will also end up in remote code execution. And uh, this is actually very hard uh, to protect against uh, because uh, the attack is happening from behind. The first attack, uh, when we are attacking uh, uh, this, uh, this way, the request has to go through the internet through the firewalls and the request will be similar to the one that we sent in the first video. Um, we will just add some malicious cookies to the request so that it, when it hits WordPress, uh, the malicious cookies will tell WordPress that this is a legit request and WordPress will tell Bricks the request is legit. Uh, this means, since it is similar to the, to the previous attack, uh, any third party firewall might block it. We don't know, we are not allowed to see their rules. It is slightly modified there is a big chance it will be let through the firewalls. It is a, also a possibility of a firewall blocking this request. We don't know. Uh, but uh, this attack method uh, does not pass the firewalls. It does not pass WordPress. It just ends up in the database. Uh, uh, what is the protection against this attack then? Well. Uh, the proposed uh, the proposed protection is to code code sign the requests. Uh, where are my? Uh, yes, let's have this read because uh, code does flow from database into evil even in the patched version, and protect injected code to database with code signature. It is also not implemented. Uh, uh, so uh, basically, what is implemented in the patch? is the quick win, the quick fix, uh, the permission check in the REST API. I will show you in the next video how to trick this. Uh, but uh, is this what to expect from the patch? I would say yes, actually. Uh, this is what to expect from the patch. Because uh, for once, the patch was released really fast. Attacks were happening. Where are we? Do we have, uh, where's the timeline? Here's the timeline. Uh, Bricks released the patch on the uh, 13th of February and somewhere here, uh, there were attack reported to Bricks and somewhere prior, I don't know if it was prior to 196, but somewhere prior to the report, uh, it was reported that attacks started. So it was really urgent to get a patch out. And the patch is protecting against the most urgent, where am I? Examine the patch, right, yes. The, the patch is protecting against the most urgent uh, issues, uh, but this is yet to be implemented in a better patch uh, in the future. And I believe this is what we can expect from, from Bricks in the near future. Uh, I know they are working on more security strategies, uh, but I will show you that this strategy will actually not protect uh, 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 from everything I'm going to do in the next video. Uh, let's see, where are we? Photoshop, yes. Uh, because a request uh, coming from this direction that is uh, 
uh, that is here uh, with a signature. Uh, Bricks could take this legit uh, request from uh, WordPress and when it ends up here, Bricks will say, okay, I see it comes from my database, but uh, I will not trust it because the signature is not valid. Uh, and this signature is hard uh, to bypass, uh, so it will probably protect against this attack. Uh, the signature uh, proposed here is not for the other attack. Uh, this is for, it can be assured that nobody has been able to inject code into the database. Yes, it will not protect against this attack. Uh, and why is that? It's because uh, this is the way Bricks is supposed uh, to function. Where do you need to sign the code? Uh, well, it is after WordPress has evaluated the request as legit. Bricks has to sign it somewhere here and then store it in the database uh, with the legit uh, signature. And uh, if the signature happens here, it is too late. Uh, so what really needs to be done to protect uh, from uh, uh, from bad actors, we should probably, uh, if, if we want bricks to execute code for us, uh, like in the code element, we probably need to work with code signatures already here. We probably need to share keys on installation or setup, like um, uh, if you're logging into SSH with a key pair, you are actually putting your key on the server with a secure tunnel and then you can use this key to encrypt the communication. And I believe it is something like that. Uh, Bricks might actually have to develop a browser extension uh, uh, that is uh, set up with shared keys upon installation to prevent uh, this attack. Uh, but this is not an easy fix. Uh, is it Bricks' fault? Uh, well, we are utilizing Bricks to execute the code for us. Uh, so Bricks is part of the problem. But as you can see, Bricks is not really alone here. There are no red, uh, there are no red requests or malicious requests hitting Bricks. We can we can execute code anyway. Uh, but the malicious requests are hitting other parts of your ecosystem. Uh, so it's really not uh, only Bricks' fault and it's very hard for Bricks to solve all your security issues. Uh, some people say uh, in comments on Facebook, in your forums uh, like that, that not to trust plugin level security. And uh, plugin level security is uh, executed here, if it is not prepended, if it is prepended, it is executed here pretty early in the chain of execution, even before WP core index is, uh, is loaded. And if not to trust plugin security, why put the security task up solely on our theme? It's not really a fair a fair demand to have on a theme. I have never really heard of theme level security because that's uh, that's too late in the chain of execution. Uh, and um, uh, yes, Bricks can implement some better strategies, uh, but it's really not just Bricks fault. Uh, as we can see here, uh, there are things to work on. This might pr probably never be green. Uh, but uh, this should probably uh, be green in the near future. Uh, this uh, will uh, probably be green in the near future as well. Uh, it will probably take a longer time to implement something uh, like code signatures uh, in the browser extension uh, because uh, it is uh, it is a complex matter and it needs to be taken serious. And can you trust the patch? Yes, it, it depends really on what you expect the patch to do. This is what it does right now. This is probably what it's going to do in the future. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you, uh, as I have said, how to reliably 
uh, attack uh, sites uh, that are uh, new installations. Uh, I will also show you how to persist uh, the attack uh, during cleans. Uh, it, the attack will persist uh, the most cleanup instructions I've seen uh, so far. Uh, so you will have a better understanding of how this works. But uh, the main goal with this video was to uh, tell you how the attacks are performed against Brick's uh, patched version and why it is not entirely Brick's fault. Uh, also why it is a very complex matter to, uh, to solve. Uh, mainly because you want the theme to execute code for you. Uh, they are trying the best uh, to do this uh, and the patched version uh, has solved the most urgent problems uh, but not all problems. Hope this was I think this was pretty fair uh, explanation uh, of it. Okay, so let's end the video here and let's uh, continue with the hacking in the next video.